Hello, welcome back to the channel. Now, the weather here in the UK is about to go through a bit of a change. Uh, we've got used to very mild temperatures recently and it's about to turn pretty cold over the next few days. And I know you guys, if you're anything like me, what you're gonna be thinking is we might get snow and that could mean a snowy camp out. Now, if everything you read and here is true, they are saying that temperatures could get down to between 10 and 15 degrees below the average for this time of year in this country, which could mean you're gonna have temperatures minus 10, minus 12, etc. And sleeping out under those conditions can be great. It can also be very challenging. But one thing that you do need, as well as a good skill set and ability to light a good fire, is a decent sleep system. And that's what we're going to look at in this video, is a very, very decent sleep system. Now the system that we are going to be looking about is probably pretty familiar to many of you. It is indeed an army surplus bushcraft bargains, and it is the current British Army MSS. MSS standing for Modular Sleep System. Now before we actually get on and talk about the system and more importantly how to use it effectively it is starting to get a little bit fresh. That bit of sun has gone away and it's starting to cloud in and chill down. So zip everything up and I'm going to bang the kettle on. So once upon a time, a long, long time ago, the army used to issue lots of different sleeping bags for different purposes. You had a general service sleeping bag. You had a, a lightweight jungle bag. You also had an Arctic bag. And then a few years ago, they started to issue a bivy bag as well. And then they had a bit of a rethink and a bit of a rationale and they probably looked at what other countries like the United States were doing and they saw that people were using a modular system so they set about looking to see what sort of systems were out there originally they went to Corinthia 
uh, and they issued the Defence Force sleeping bag. They then, probably for financial reasons, got a company called Fesca to make their own version of it. Now, there's a bit of debate which is better, the Fesca version or the Corinthian one. Well, the Corinthian one is, it's also hugely expensive. And that's what makes the issue Fesca one such a bushcraft bargain. If you go out and buy a Corinthian Defence 4 nowadays, you're looking at about 150, 160 quid, if you can get hold of one. On the surplus market, they are difficult to get hold of. Yeah, you can buy them new, but they come at a price, as I've said. The little Fesca bag that the it's based on the the defence for by Corinthia it is pretty much identical, and we'll see that in a minute. The thing that's not identical is the cost, because the cost you can pick them up. Well, I had a quick look round this morning before I came out um, and £35 upwards um, for a sort of super grade job. If you want to get a brand new one, they're out there and that is for the medium weight bag. But as I said, this is a, a modular sleeping system because what they decided to do is instead of have lots of issue bags, jungle, general service, Arctic. What they decided to do was come up with this modular system which takes one of those bags out because you can have a lightweight bag for warm weather or jungle type use. You have a medium weight bag which actually takes you through most of the year, certainly here in the UK. And if it gets really really cold or if you're operating in the Arctic then you combine the two bags and it makes up a system. So what we'll do is I'll get the system out and you can have a look at it. So the actual sleeping bags themselves. Um, this one is the medium weight bag. And what I'll say with all of these is I'm not using the issue compression bags. These are issue ones, but they're not the ones for the current ones. This is one of the old system um, for the old bouncing bomb. This is the medium weight bag. Comes in, as I said, you pick them up from about 35 quid and they weigh about two and a half kilos. We've then got the lightweight, warm weather, jungle patrols bag call it what you like For this one again it's not in the current issue uh, bag but um, it does fit in the old uh, lightweight bag compression sack much much easier than it does in the current issue one these ones again from about 35 40 pounds brand new um, and they weigh in at about 1.7 kilos I think it is also with the system guys get issued a sleeping bag liner which I don't particularly like I'm not a big fan if I'm going to use a liner I tend to use my mini more scarf but the bit I do like about the system is one of these and this is one of the British Army uh, Gore-Tex bivy bags this is a DPM one obviously the new ones are MTP it's exactly the same bag it's just a different camo pattern any of you who have watched this channel a lot will know that I use this bivy bag a heck of a lot. It's a bomb proof piece of kit. Indeed, as is the rest of the system. Now, if, uh, in the UK, this medium weight bag is the one you're probably going to use the most. It will take you through spring, uh, through the summer. It might be a bit warm for the summer, but you can just use it as a throw, chuck it over the, over the top of yourself. In the winter, most of the time in the UK, this is enough. Um, you see me use the Corinthian Defence for the performance is very very similar the only thing that's different is these are a little bit heavier than the defense for the materials yeah probably certainly the outer is a slightly lesser quality material the inside 
it's very slightly different. It does have the reflective thermal barrier, I know, because I've cut one open to have a look. Exactly the same as it does in the Corinthia. I've also cut my Corinthia to have a look. Um, and yeah, there's not a lot in it. What you do get with this one is pretty much exactly the same. So it's a center opening sleeping bag. One of those ones with the little face hole. And then inside you've got uh, usual box foot. But what this has that the defense wall doesn't have is two mesh dump pockets, one either side of the zip level with your chest so you can dry kit out or you can keep small items in there that you, you, you want to get to in the middle of the night like a head torch etc or it might be if it's really really cold where you're going to keep your, your batteries and stuff anything that runs on batteries doesn't like the cold so you can keep it all in those pockets in that chest area so on that I think it actually scores better than the defense for Now, with the lightweight bag, again, this one is not a center opening zip. This one is a side opening zip. It doesn't have the little face hole. It has a more of a, a traditional cow style hood. It doesn't have a, a, a zip shoulder baffle, but then it is designed for use in the warmer weather. What it does have is the two pockets inside um, on the chest, exactly the same uh, as the medium weight bag. It also has, um, at the front running across the bottom, there's uh, some little pop studs and you undo those and roll out an insect net that fits across the front and it zips up into the hood. So if you're using this in warm weather, it is, yeah, it's very well set up for that. What it also has is ties around the outside at strategic points which line up with the ties on the inside of the medium weight bag. So the two bags are mateable. So if it's really, really cold, hopefully like we're gonna get here in the UK in the next few days, um, then this will fit inside and then you've got a complete system. <coughs> And then both of those bags are designed to be used with a waterproof bivy cover. Indeed, the uh, little jungle bag uh, with one of these over the top of it, actually, I tend to perhaps throw a little fleece liner in there or sometimes a poncho liner. And actually that does me as a fairly flexible system through most of the summer. This Gore-Tec bivy bag adds almost a, a whole season to, to the other bag. So not only does it keep it dry, but it also helps to keep you that little bit warm, keeping that climate, um, microclimate around you. These are cut absolute huge. If you go back through my videos, you'll see um, I've made a couple of modifications to mine, which allow it to be used almost as a little stealth camping type tent. Now, as I said, all of those items are priced well you can get the bivy bag for about 30 35 pounds and each of the sleeping bags for about 35 pounds so if you're on a budget actually one of those bags makes a lot of sense if you've got yourself the medium weight bag and the Gore-Tex bivy bag that goes with it at 70 quid and that would see you pretty much year round yes if it gets really cold might want to add an extra layer. It doesn't have to be the, the little jungle bag. You could just use any bag you've got inside it. So if you're on a budget, the MSS system makes an awful lot of sense. So in use. I know I've used mine quite a bit over the last couple of years. It's a good sleeping bag, a very good sleeping bag. I find it really comfortable, I find it really warm, and 
the features on it are excellent. However, when I first got it, I didn't like it at all. I didn't like that little face hole. Because what I found would happen, and I'm quite an active sleeper, so I would wriggle about in the night, next thing I'd, I'd wake up and I couldn't breathe because my face was into the bag and the air hole was somewhere up here behind the back of my head. And I found that really quite odd. But then I had a little bit of an epiphany. I was laying in bed one morning under my duvet, thinking, oh, this is lovely and warm. And at home, we tend to sleep with the window open, so the bedroom is, is always cold. And I thought, I don't have my head in under my duvet at home. Why do I need my head inside my sleeping bag when I'm out? And that gave me an idea. And then I went out and tried it, and it made a whole, whole world of difference. Suddenly, I was warm all the time in the sleeping bag. I was comfortable the whole time, and it was wonderful. So you probably, I don't know, you may have experienced the same thing. That actually, this funny little hole system you don't like at all. So what I'm gonna share with you is how I sleep in the MSS, and the, how I set myself up. So the components of the system I'm gonna be using for this demonstration is the medium weight sleeping bag, the Gore-Tex, bivy bag and I'm also going to be using a foam roll mat. Now there's two other items that I'm going to use as well. First one is a small inflatable air mattress. Just a little cheapy one, it's not an expensive thermo rest. I've got this one from Alp Kits, it's called a cloud base. Again if you watch the channel regularly you've seen me using this a lot. I've also got two wire tent pegs. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got an area of ground that's relatively level. I'm going to take my roll mat, I've cleared the ground, I'm just going to roll this out. Like so. Now its main job is not really comfort, it's there to protect the rest of the system, i.e. my bivy bag and my mattress. So I'm going to lay this out on the top of that. Then, down at the foot end, I'll take my two tent pegs and I've added two little loops to the foot of my roll mat, oh, sorry, of my bivy bag, so that I can peg it to the ground. Again, this is something that's gonna help with me not shifting about during the night, because as I said, I am an active sleeper. Now, at this point, what I normally do is I put my sleeping bag inside the bivy bag, but so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna leave it on the top for now. Now with the sleeping bag all laid out, as I said, this would normally be inside the bivy bag. Next thing I'm gonna do, is take my air mattress and put it inside the sleeping bag. And these are a full length mattress and they fit perfectly inside the midweight bag. So now it's all in my bivy bag, the whole lot is inside. Next thing I want to do is, well, I'm going to create myself a pillow. For that, I'm going to take this, my little green fleece, and all I'm going to do is stuff it inside that top bit. 
like so. So there it all is, good to go. Bivy bag, take down. Underneath that is a layer of foam which helps protect the bivy bag and it helps protect my little mat. In the top there, I've got a warm jacket that's gonna act as a pillow. And sticking out behind all of it, I've got my bivy bag hood. There's a couple of other items I'm gonna need. Now, normally, obviously, if I'm getting in a sleeping bag, I strip down. So I've just got a single layer on underneath. But what I also have is this double skinned woolly hat and my little dry bag. <coughs> my little woolen head over that one there. And those two bits of kit are absolutely essential. One of the things I noticed when I first got this and I used it in the conventional way was that as you move around that air hole because your face is inside it just becomes that a hole and as you move around inside the bag all the warm air that's around your body is pumped out through that hole also while you're in that sleeping bag you're also breathing air into the bag and that air contains moisture and that moisture as the night goes on and it gets colder, begins to condense. And that was what was leaving me feeling cold. So this way of sleeping in the bag gets around that. So there we go, I'm in the bag. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shuffle down into the bag and I'm gonna zip it up with the hole, the face hole around my neck. So my head is free, it's resting on the, the pillow which is in the top of the hood. If the weather does get cold, or if I need that extra protection from the wind perhaps, all I do is I pull the bivy bag hood up around me. All of that warm air around my body is then trapped in there. And I can move around in my sleep, and it's not gonna escape out through the neck hole. Instead, it's gonna to help to keep me nice and warm. Now this is a system I've used quite a lot. A lot of people say, oh, having the air mat inside decreases on the space, which then cuts down on the amount of insulated air around you. It doesn't. I'm five foot nine. This is a medium sized bag. <clears throat> I've got a little rotund in the last few years. And even with the air mat inside, there's still loads of space. These bags are cut huge. They're designed for a soldier and his kit. So there's plenty of space in there. Now, obviously if it does get super cold, well, what you can do is you can add the other bag to the inside. It's got little tie points on it. And because one's a side zip and one's a center zip, it gives you offset zips. As I said, the pocket systems are the same. One of the other things I've experimented with is the little lightweight bag actually works really well outside. It doesn't have to be inside at all. It actually works really well. Set up in this way, just with the jungle bag slid up over the top. Yes, the two aren't tied together, so they're not mated as such. However, because the mat is keeping you stable, the bivy bag is keeping you stable, doesn't matter you don't tend to move around that much where you're going to actually shift the two bags apart from each other so with the inside or outside both work really well the lightweight jungle bag is the zip runs all the way around the outside so you can open it out and use it just thrown over the top a bit like a poncho liner we can use it as a casualty blanket it has loads of different uses because it has that flexibility to be able to the other great thing with the lightweight jungle bag is it has a zip that runs <coughs> around the outside. So rather than just going, so the other great thing with the jungle bag is the long zip 
and it runs round in such a way that it runs down the side and across the foot section so the whole thing can be opened out so it can be used as a, a duvet as a throw it can be used as a casualty blanket it can be used inside a hammock it really is a great little bit of kit and well thought out for the warm weather so there you go that is my little review of the modular sleep system as issued to the british army definitely an army surplus bushcraft bargain and definitely a cracking piece of kit durability wise well it's all made to military spec they even come with a little spare zipper pull on there which if you're out in the field and the zip goes well normally you'd be buggered but not with this little system so it works very very well i've used this one down to i think they say that they're supposed to be used on their own down to about freezing or, or minus five and using it in the way i showed you here yeah i've gone down to below freezing to minus five six uh, and i've been absolutely fine obviously if it gets any colder then yeah you're probably going to want something inside or you're going to want to be inside a tent but for most of the use that we use our sleeping bags for in the uk it's more than adequate on its own as i say if you want to go out and get the jungle bag that you can then use in the summer or if it gets really cold like hopefully it's going to and you can put it and use it with the bag so you make the two bags together to make that really cold weather sleep system then yeah it's definitely worth something going out and looking into it's so obviously if that weather does arrive and you do decide to get out in the woods and maybe do a camp out please 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 do everything you can to keep yourself safe take all the usual precautions make sure you've got the right kit make sure you tell someone where you're going make sure you've got a an emergency plan just in case something goes wrong stay safe in the so there's one other thing i've got to do apart from all the, the the usual social media type stuff in the last video I had a BPS knife to give away. And we've done the draw for this cracking, cracking knife, and it really, really is. Uh, this time I did it, so I spanned through the list, jabbed my finger at the screen, and the lucky winner is, drum roll please, and his name's gonna appear just up there, is Brian Montgomery 2900. So Brian, congratulations, get, in, get yourself in touch to the email that's coming up on the screen down here and send me over your address and obviously proof that you're over 18 years of age and we will get that in the post to you soon as. Now, one other thing, while you're down in that description box down below looking stuff up, you will also see uh, a link over there to my social media and uh, things like Facebook, Instagram, etc. Pop over there and give me a follow. There is also a link down there to my Greencraft Etsy shop greencraft shop and over there you will find a whole host of different things my little uh, patches my little greencraft patches and I, I think i've got another load of haversacks just about to come up there very very nearly finished so those are there and what is also there are my little survival necklaces so pop yourself over there get yourself one of these certainly in the winter as we, we showed in an earlier video where you've got all those layers on having a few essential bits of kit close at hand around your neck really works so pop over there have a look at those anyway i think that's everything i've been neil and until next time stay safe hopefully in them snowy woods <laughs>